Hello, my friends. Today I am at Motor City Spindle Repair in Dearborn, Michigan. Welcome to one of the most amazing CNC spindle repair centers in the country. I hope you'll join me on a shop tour to learn a little bit more about their grinding processes, about their refurb processes, about their quoting processes, and some of the people who work here as well. Hello, hello, my friends. I am here with the amazing Ted at Motor City Spindle Repair in Dearborn, Michigan. We're gonna give you a little shop tour and show you exactly what's going on here with some of the amazing spindles that have come in that need to be repaired and then shipped right back out the door thanks to the excellent customer service you guys provide. So Ted, let's just kind of walk around and you can showcase exactly what's going on. Yeah, so just so everybody knows, we're in our tear down and inspection department. Um, we can take a look at the spindle room later, but this is actually where we have our staff just tearing down inspecting spindles. So we take pride in giving fast, accurate uh, quotations for spindle repair. We try to do them typically same day as receipt. Uh, some of the units fight us. Uh, it doesn't always happen, but happens quite a bit. Um, right here, great spindle. Um, you and I have been talking a lot today about you know, machining centers, turning centers, and partnerships. Um, this is a Doosan HP 4000 spindle. It's Cat 40. A lot of these are 12,000, 15,000 RPM. Um, this one is a cartridge. It's also motorized. You can see very clearly by the, by the motor leads. Um, this unit just came in. Um, it's late afternoon, so hopefully this will be quoted before we go home, but most likely tomorrow by noon. Um, let's take a quick walk around. Um, and typically, how long uh, does it take you to quote one of these spindles? Typically 24 hours. That's good uh, timing. You know, we got in a unit that, that's over there on the test stand. It came in yesterday, and we quoted it in about 90 minutes. That, that's really not typical. Um, and that unit has already been uh, reworked by doing um, grind to the bearing journals, um, requalifying some surfaces, brand new bearings, O-ring seals, uh, balance test run and then it's heading out the door. Uh, 24 um, hours is pretty close to I want it yesterday, which is what most of the demand is, right? Yep, yep. And uh, Ian and Dave are, are working on a, a Haas spindle. Um, we don't do a ton of Haas spindles as far as just repair. They're typically not a really economical spindle to repair, but if customers are having problems with spindle life, we can extend spindle life by um, changing the bearing configuration, um, going to uh, an upgraded bearing, sometimes going from steel to ceramic there's a couple different things we can do for customers um, but a lot of times when they call us and say how much does it cost to repair a hot spindle we say you know what a couple grand more you can get a new one so it depends on what you get going on that makes sense yep um, let's see what else we have going on around here um, this unit might be a little bit difficult to see but we have a, uh, a motorized um, Morisiki spindle uh, sitting here a little bit old school um, let me take a look at this taper. This is a uh, this is a Cat 30. Uh, a lot of the spindles that we're doing are like that unit right there. The Doosan is a uh, a Cat 40 or Cat 50. Um, a lot of larger units. Um, motorized. Another motorized unit here that uh, the guys are going to be um, inspecting the bearing journals on. So what do we have here, Ted? Uh, so we're looking at a Hessup turning center. Uh, as you can see by the large rotor, it's a motorized spindle coming out of a turning center. Uh, a lot of people probably aren't familiar with the OEM HESSUP, uh, but they're probably familiar with MAG, who bought HESSUP years ago. Uh, then Thieves bought, uh, bought HESSUP from MAG, and right now I don't know if they're, they're under the umbrella of uh, FFP or not, but um, this is a, a, a really, really common, common machine tool spindle we find in a lot, of, uh, a lot of brake component manufacturer plants all over the Midwest, all over the country. Absolutely love rebuilding them. Um, you don't see a lot of large aluminum housings like this particular unit, but um, it is motorized. Uh, the windings have already been stripped out to be completely rewound. Um, this unit over here, one of my favorites, um, this is an Enshu. Looks a lot like a Makino A55. Looks a lot like a lot of DMG Mori uh, spindles that you're seeing, a lot of Kesslers. Um, but this is out of a, a JE60, same as a JE80. Um, Cat 40 motorized machining center spindle. Um, a lot of these are 12,000, 15,000. Some of them are 20,000 RPM. Um, we are certified by NCHU. They send a lot of these to us um, straight out of their facility in Chicago, but then they also work with a lot of customers when they don't have spindles in stock and they send them to us directly from the, from the end user. We work with them 
and uh, take care of their customers. Well, I mean, it looks like there's a wide variety of spindles here, and it looks like you have a great team dedicated to, you know, kind of working on each individual spindle, giving out a quote, and, and moving along the way as quickly as possible. Yeah, and what I love about this is if you come into our facility tomorrow or come Monday, um, you're going to see all brand new spindles, um, meaning these are all going to be torn down, they're going to be inspected, they're going to be quoted, and they're going to go up on the shelves behind us. So you're not going to say this, see the same unit sitting in the same, sitting in the same place. Um, I talked to you about it earlier. You know, a lot of people out there are taking a week, two weeks, three weeks to quote spindles. In my history, uh, that's because people aren't putting their hands on them and they're not tearing them apart. And it's not because we're not busy. Uh, we just we put staff in place to uh, to do what it takes to quote fast, uh, get these jobs processed, and get them back out the door. Well, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people on all sorts of different platforms, as you know, and it's very important to me that um, I understand what the demand of the customer is, what the desires of the customers are. And at the end of the day, we see a lot of that being customer service. So for you to play, put people in place where you can get these quotes out and get these things turned over and a whole new set of spindles comes in very quickly, to me, that's the most important thing that, that the customers want at the end of the day anyway. And one of my favorite quotes, and you've probably heard this, Ted, is our products are no longer what we tell the customers they are. It's what the customers tell other customers they are. So it's very important that we do take care of them like it's very significant that you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're getting a lot of spindle repairs in from service guys working directly for major OEMs. Um, a lot of cases, uh, let's, let's call them X ex-employees uh, of major OEMs, but um, we're getting a lot of referral work out there. Uh, a lot of distributors of major machine tool companies are now reaching out to us. We've, we've set up several partnerships, but we're having new companies reach out on a regular basis. Um, I had a president of a company call me last night around 6, 6 p.m. He's got spindles coming our way. Um, about an hour ago, I just talked to another gentleman based out of uh, the Wisconsin area, uh, another distributor. They got more spindles coming our way. Uh, talking to people all over the country. And I love it because, you know, making sales calls and, and talking to customers face to face is what I enjoy doing most. During COVID, it's kind of difficult to get out there. Um, I told you earlier today, you know, it was kind of frustrating. In Michigan, a lot of the appointments we're setting up are getting, are getting shut down, but we're trying to combat that by moving more out west, uh, moving more down south, um, getting out of Michigan. And, um, you know, video, video conference calls, video tours, we're doing more and more of, but, you know, nothing beats getting out and seeing a customer face to face. I never thought I'd say it, but I miss the trade shows, you know, even the setting up and yeah. breaking down. And, you know, that's why we're here for you, Ted. That's why MTD is here. And we want to create this content to let people know, even though we can't, a lot of appointments are getting canceled and we can't always get face to face. We're here to support you, you know, and we want to be that news channel to help broadcast all the significance that you bring to this industry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the trade shows are great. Uh, I really enjoy them the first couple of days. After a few days, they start to get old. Now that I'm not drinking, it'll probably be a little bit different too because I won't be on my third and fourth day of a hangover. <laughs> but um, I, I definitely love the shows. Um, you know, I missed seeing uh, IMTS last fall. Um, that was the first one I've missed since, I, I don't know if it was 98 or, or uh, 2000, but, um, but look forward to getting back out there soon and, and seeing some other trade shows. And I, I've been hearing from different people in the industry that they're slowly picking back up, but they're, they're kind of sparse. We do miss that face-to-face -face interaction. Our industry is built on being able to see one another and, and kind of touch and feel the machines and see what everyone is up to and looking at that new technology. Sometimes the digital world doesn't do justice, but, you know, we're here, we're growing, we're expanding, we're doing everything we can to make sure the word is spread. And at the end of the day, this success that we're generating as a team together as a unit in this industry of engineering and manufacturing, it's important that we take care of one another and support each other from end user to manufacturer to everyone in between. We have to take care of one another and we'll do that in any way possible, whether we're face to face or whether we can't be and we're on Zoom meetings, giving a virtual high five or a virtual hug or whatever it is that we wanna to do to inspire one another. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, anybody who wants to reach out, you know, we can't be all things to all people, but we got a lot of great partners out there. We got, we got people doing just about every aspect of uh, machine tool repair or machine tool service. And uh, if we can't do it ourselves, we can definitely point you in the right direction and help people out. Well, we can't be all things to all people, but to me, you are an inspiration. I'm grateful to call you a friend. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. And you. Well, 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 my friends. I thought since I was here at Motor City Spindle Repair, I would show, well, you guys already know Sydney, but I thought I'd spend a little time with Sydney and just get to know 
our viewing audience a little bit more because Motor City has a heck of a viewing audience already. And you're kind of the face of that. We see you a lot along with a couple other uh, folks within Motor City, but I thought we'd take the opportunity to get to know you a little bit better. So Sydney, how are you liking working at Motor City and how are you enjoying the engineering industry? I'm really enjoying it actually. I just started here about a month ago and I've always had an interest in the machining industry in general. I grew up with my dad being an engineer so I've always had that as at heart but I'm on the more artistic side of things so I came into it as like the social media coordinator and helping develop that. So I go in and get to be a part of all of this and get pictures, get video and be able to present it to our big audience and I'm coming into it with it pretty much established already which is a bonus but it's nice being a, a new face in, in their spectrum. Yeah well you're certainly a creative person and speaking with you earlier you've come from a background that started out with that creativity and then became much broader. Yeah <laughs> I was just saying earlier um, telling him that I worked at a print company before that and I went in as the graphic designer but then it changed into pretty much running the shop. So I had my hands in the, the phones, the customer interaction, all of the emails, any of the ordering, dealing with suppliers, you name it. I was pretty much doing it for everybody. So I didn't really have as good of a quality of life. So I, I'm glad to be here. I've got great people that I'm working with. Love the people that I was with before, but it was just a lot. So now I have a better time frame, a better schedule, and these guys are great, honestly. Everybody's so excited to be here every day. Their energy and positive atmosphere is just incredible. Well, you mentioned a better quality of life, and you just showed me your dog. Introduced yes. me to your dog. So yes. you get to bring your dog to work every day. Yes, she's, uh, her name's Bacon. I'm sure you guys have seen her on social media. She's, she'll make appearances here and there. Um, but, yeah, I got her back in May during quarantine, and uh, she's a bonus for sure that I can bring her into to my office and hang out with her all day. Well, we all know that Ted is, is quite a character. Yes. So <laughs> what is your favorite part about working here at Motor City? With Ted specifically or just in Doesn't general? Doesn't have to be. We all, we all love Ted. But in general, with engineering, with this you know, unique background of the chaos that's going on here, the organized yes. chaos, the madness of, of creativity and productivity um, is a little bit different from web design. Well, yeah. And I, I had web design, but it was um, print design as well. Print and I, design. we did like banners and vehicle wraps and all you, all sorts of marketing things like that. But being here, I would say definitely just the positive atmosphere, like I mentioned before, yeah. is just incredible. Every single person that I've come to talk to here loves what they're doing. And I've never seen anybody like mad or pissed off at anything for more than five minutes once they've figured out what's going on and they get moving on to the next part of the project. It, everybody is just, I don't even know how to describe it. It's it, before, at the last place I was at, it was completely draining. <laughs> By the end of the day, every, the customers were great, but you got tired of it. And now it, you come in and you talk to the guys, you talk to the techs, anybody in the spindle room or in the teardown area, and every single one of them is loving what they're doing. They're laughing and they're, and they're talking with each other, and it's, it's really cool. To me, not having a stressful environment adds to the productivity and the quality of the work that comes from that environment. Would yes. you agree? I would definitely agree with that. <laughs> Coming from a place where I was doing everything, I, I didn't have an option of not being productive, but I didn't have help either, and we definitely could have thrived if I had a little little hand in with some other people that work there, but it, I'm really happy to be here, and we're seemingly doing great things, and Ted's raving every day, like, going and doing strong things, and I love where it's going, and he's just, his energy is just intense, and I love it. <laughs> Do you find that you're learning some of the terminology about the machines and what's going on on the detailed side of yes. the engineering as well? Yeah, every time I go back there to, to get more video or pictures, what have you, I am constantly asking, I'm spending probably an extra 10 minutes back there asking the techs what they're doing just so that I know what I'm taking pictures of, getting the content for, because I don't want to be blind when I'm just taking pictures and posting it online, because if I don't know what I'm talking about, people are going to see that. I want to know what this industry is about. I want to see what these machines are doing. I want to see the parts that we're turning around, the repairs that we're making so that, oh, <laughs> so we're tearing down in the background. <laughs> um, to be able to portray that correctly. If I have the information at my disposal, I'll be able to present it better. 
100% agree. And thank you for putting forth that effort because I think it's also very important that we have some knowledge into what we're getting into, regardless of the creativity, which is also super important. Yes. We do need to have the technical knowledge as well. So thank you for investing your time to make sure the people understand you out there even better. Yeah. Guys, this is Sydney. You know her face from social media, I'm absolutely sure. Now you know a little bit more about her. And as always, as you see in her posts, you can reach out anytime. They're happy to offer you quotes, and they are excellent at customer service. Yep. And if there's anything that you guys have um, seen us do or work on, and you're not sure if we have a particular spindle that we work on or repair, um, reach out to me specifically, and I'll make sure to get that content out to you um, directly. And if it's something that we've already posted, I'll get it linked back to you, or I'll make sure to put that on the list of content to put together. We do a ton of different OEMs and repairs and I want to make sure that you guys are the ones asking what you want to see so I can know what to show you. Well said, Sydney. And I do appreciate your time as it's the one thing we can never have back. And That's I know you're true. a busy person. <laughs> That's true. So thank you for being a part of this MTD special oh, of for Sydney. Me. <laughs> and thank you all for watching, and we will see you again soon.